I love you guys who are nice and early and on time. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And we appreciate you every day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> How are you guys doing out there? My throat's bothering me this morning. I'm, I live in Santa Cruz, so it's, a, oh, it's awful. Yeah. I, I'm over in San Jose just because, frankly, the air is better over here than it is in Santa Cruz right now. Wow. That's so harsh. I, I've yeah. seen several on Facebook just evacuated or just lost their house or yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. 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 Sad. Yeah. I had a little coughing spell yesterday. I thought, <laughs> wow, I'm sure it's the uh, smoke because that's not normal. It was no, weird. It's not just, good. Try not to breathe that air if you can. Stay yeah. inside. <clears throat> good morning, bad, Gordon. Now, no. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm hanging in there. How are you? Kind of the same boat, feeling a little helpless and depleted. Yeah, we just got to have distractions like this, like Ignite. Just <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you being on here today, and I know you know what to do. So uh, let me make you a co-host. That would be important. Awesome. Did it work? Yeah, there we go. This time it worked. Okay. You're a co-host, sir. And I actually have um, coaching appointments all morning. So I'm going to let you take it away because I, I know you don't probably don't need me. Do you need me for anything? <clears throat> um, only if there's big technical difficulties that I all can't right. handle. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, my throat. So holler at me because I'll have you in the background. Okay. Okay. Are you going right. to put the stuff in the chat room? Yeah, I, okay. I will, I'll put it in a couple of times like I do, but I'll wait till more people are on. Okay. Awesome. So thank you so much. Happy of Friday, course. everybody. Everybody, please stay safe out there this weekend too. Thank you, you as well, Laura. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. All right. Good morning, everyone. We got a couple minutes to go. So we'll give some, uh, we'll give people a couple minutes. It's a uh, Friday. And it's a little, uh, little heavy, so we're going to try and have some fun in the class and have a little bit of a distraction. So we'll get started in a couple minutes. about two more minutes and we're going to go ahead and get started.
All righty. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Good. How you doing? Good. Doing great, Jordan. Awesome. I'm glad to hear it. I'm doing good. I am healthy. I'm smack dab in the middle of Santa Cruz and Salinas. I live in Watsonville, so I'm getting the smoke from both sides, but I'm fortunate that I haven't had to be evacuated. So I'm on the west side. On the You're on the west side, Dennis. Have they issued a, a warning? Um, no, we haven't got anything yet. Um, but it is six miles away from me. All right. Well, if you need anything, you've got all my contact information. So please don't hesitate to reach out. And I will not. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we are going to jump into it. All right. Can everyone see Ignite, the PowerPoint? Wonderful. Let's go ahead and get started. My name is Jordan Thorpe. I'm with the Santa Cruz Market Center. I've been there for uh, just under two years. It'll be two years in December. I've been in real estate license since 2014, May of 2014. So I've seen a couple of changes. Um, kind of the, buy, the market we're in right now where there's a frenzy of buyers and not enough inventory is one of the markets that I started in. So it's uh, bringing back some memories of getting into real estate. But that being said, we are going to run through, not run through this, but go through this PowerPoint, Ignite, Skills to Spark a Great Career, Elemental Session Number 5, The Buyer Consultations. All right, and if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask them. Uh, if they're typed in the chat, can I get someone to watch the chat for me and just speak out when there's a question in the chat? Any takers? Yeah, I can do it. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, so we are, we all know that we have the three L's in real estate. Leads, listing, leverage. It's that triangle. It's always going to be there. We all want listings at some point. Listings have people come to us, whereas if we're representing buyers, we have to go to them. What I found in my career, uh, some personal fulfillment with buyers, is that you're kind of fighting for them a lot more and you're helping them really get to a better uh, place for their financial future and their futures in general because real estate is likely the largest investment that they're going to make in their lifetime. So if they have a great foundation with you as a buyer, uh, representing them as a buyer, they're going to repeat that to their friends, to their family members. And if you do all the right things, you keep in touch with them. Years later, when they're ready to sell, who do you think they're going to call? Us. That's right. What successful agents do every day? Two things, grow our business, we run our business. We never put running our business before growing our business. What is our number one jobs as real estate agents? Lead gen. What is our number two job as real estate agents? Lead gen. What is our number three job as real estate agents? Lead gen. Always, always, always legion. Yeah, I could say what is our 50th job and legion will always be the correct answer. Always be lead generating and you never know who your next client will be or where they're going to come from. So when you think about it, you're always kind of lead generating. If I go and pick something up from a restaurant at takeout and someone's there and I'm waiting outside six feet apart, of course, and we're talking, hey, what do you do? Oh, I'm a real estate agent. Oh, great. I've been looking at purchasing. What's the market like? Well, when's a good time to give you a call? Get their information so now you have a new contact for your database. Growing your business consists of four things. Lead generating for buyers and sellers. Making seller listing presentations and get listings. Make buyer presentations and get listings and previewing real estate. There's kind of a thought right now that we can't really preview real estate. It's not true. It's, there's more hurdles involved with re previewing real estate, 
because of the PED form and having to schedule everything, it's not like they're vacant and we can just go. Now we actually have to contact the agent, send the PED form over, make sure there's no one else there. Make sure you get it done. You could have a neighbor see you going in and ask you questions and gather their contact information. Running our business, market, seller listings, showing buyers, houses, negotiating contracts, transaction management to closing, vendor management, setting goals, compliance and risk management, attending trainings and getting coaching and managing money. Those are the things we do when we work in our business and when we work on our business. Mm -hmm. Questions so far? Jordan, um, how do you capture the contact leads if you're out all the time? Do you have a handy pen and page or do you just put it right in your uh, phone or how do you do it? Phone, okay. On my phone, gather their information. I put them in as a contact. I make myself a little note afterwards and I put them into Kelly. I can put them into Kelly right then and there and then it goes right into command and I have it in my database. People always say, oh, well, I'll get your information. Has anyone been out and someone said, oh, well, do you have a card on you? Yes. Do you give them your card? I do, and then I ask for theirs. Do they give it to you? They usually will say, I'll contact you. And I say, oh, well, I can get a hold of you. You know, yeah, I try to get it. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'm not successful. Yeah. So here's what you can say. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm fresh out of business cards. I have mm. a virtual business card. What's your phone number? And I can text it to you. Mm. And you have a picture of your business card saved or you create the image in command mm -hmm. and you send it to them. Now okay. you have their phone number. Now you have their contact information. Okay. So it's a way of getting their contact information without, capture, without turning the script into what's your contact information? Let me contact you. Okay. Has anyone ever, I guess, rejected that proposal? Like if you're saying, oh, I don't have a card, let me send you a virtual card. You're like, you know what, never mind, I don't want it anymore. Yeah, yeah, that has happened to me. And they kind of go, well, what, that not kind of, that has happened to me multiple times. And they say, well, what kind of business person doesn't have a card on them? And the one, my go-to is the kind of business person who's given it out to so many people to network and the kind of person who's so tech enabled to have a virtual one to benefit you in the tech world we live in. That's a great answer. A lot of the times they're going to feel very combative and confrontational and that's okay. You have to remain calm, cool, collected, and just know what you're going to say to them. If they're saying that, they're wanting to you to see, they're wanting to see you fight for their business. No never means no. It means find a loophole. With this, there are cases where no means no. With real estate, it means find a loophole, dig a little deeper, find their motivations and go with that. I think we're dealing with very smart uh, crowd in the Silicon Valley, especially, so we cannot outsmart them. They want to show us that they know our intention. Uh, and if they're giving it to us, not because they believe us that we don't have a real um, card to give, but, you know, because we want their information. Yeah, we absolutely want their information. There, it's no secret. We want their information. Yeah. Whoever has the data has the power in the situation. Mm -hmm. So the goal of having a buyer consultation is getting a buyer representation form signed. Is everyone using buyer representation, buyer broker agreements? Yes, no, maybe. When I get a buyer, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm a big fan of buyer broker agreements. Why do you think it's important for us to be getting buyer broker agreements? It protects your time. You could spend 
three to eight months uh, with these people and then they use the guy in the open house that they fell in love with and doesn't matter how much time you did, kind of protects your, your time that you've spent with them. It's an agreement of, yes, I'll use you, I'm not gonna ditch you. Absolutely, it forces you to have a conversation no matter what the outcome is. It also protects your financial interest in the transaction because you are financially vested in it. Your time, your money, your gas that you had to go for showings, all of that are things that you don't get back. If you're signing something, it's a security agreement for them to use you. We don't present it that way because we don't want to make it seem like it's all about commissions. And it's not about commissions. It's a conversational tool. When you're setting the appointment, the goal is to get the buyer representation agreement signed. You're gonna to wanna to find out what the needs and the wants are of the buyer. And you have to convey your value proposition to the buyer. They're not going to sign something if they don't see your value proposition over here. So if I just say, here's a piece of paper, I need you to sign it chances are the person sitting across the way from me is not going to say yes, or the person on the other side of the Zoom is going to say yes. I have to make them feel like they are comfortable, secure, they know I've got this in the bag, I'm gonna be on the front lines for them, and they are so ready to sign it, the second I send it over and DocuSign it gets signed. Let's see, it froze up on me. Give me one second. Okay, there we go. So everyone should have seen the lead generation model by now. It's a giant funnel. This is the model for a solo agent. We're prospecting based marketing enhance. The, it, that tunnel funnels down to captured leads. From there, we want to have contact with them over and over and over and over until we connect with them. Once they're connected, they're considered a contact. From a contact, we keep in contact with them. Send them something. Maybe you don't have to send them something or talk to them every single day that week if they're a contact now. Maybe it's twice a week. Whatever it is. Then there's a cultivation stage. This is where they have became a contact and they finally had that, uh, you know what, it's time to buy or it's time to sell. You've cultivated that through your touches with them, through your campaigns, through your marketing, through your prospecting, all of that. Then it's time to set the appointment. So here is what it really sounds like. Say I meet them at an open house, get their contact information, set them up on a campaign, they get all the information. We have email correspondence. Hey, thanks so much for the info. Hey, what do you think about the market? Hey, what do you think about the rates? Whatever it is. Then they express some sort of interest. You know, I was looking at this house and I really liked it. Bingo. Well, great, Mr. Buyer or Seller or Mrs. Buyer or Seller. What's it going to take to get you into a home like that? and they kind of look and they think, and they probably want to say, well, you're the professional, you should know. But I put the question on them because then they're going to have to say it out loud and then I'm already there. So if they say, well, I need to do X, Y, and Z, or I need to talk to a professional. Well, you're talking to me, I'm right here. How can I help you? Let's have a conversation. How's tonight at six or Monday at seven? And they'll say, tonight at six works great. Or, oh, I'm not ready. And if they say, I'm not ready, okay. Well, how many more houses like this one would you like to see that are not yours? And then they think a little bit and they go, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, no, I don't want to see any more of them. I, I want the next one to be mine. So you set the appointment. Now you have the appointment coming up, there's a couple of things you need to do. You have to prepare the buyer consultation. 
and you have to prepare the buyer broker agreement. One can be found in command, one can be found in CAR, in zip forms. Questions on the lead generation model? No. All right. Role model setting the appointment. So that's what we just did. Does tonight at seven, six work for you or Monday at 7 p.m.? Neither. Okay, how about the weekend? How does Saturday anytime between three and five work or Sunday between 10 and one? Uh, Saturday between three and five. Wonderful. Three, three o'clock, 3.30, what works best? 3.30, wonderful, great. Send them a Zoom link, set everything up, send them a cal calendar link, all that good stuff. Unless it's your family and you live with them or you're under the same roof as them, probably going to be Zoom. And I won't lie to you, it's a lot different than connecting in person. You have to kind of find a way to connect with them. What's the best way to connect with someone you're trying to get to sell, to sign a buyer broker agreement? Connect on some human level. Connect on some human level. How do you do that? Within the first 15 to 30 seconds, you know, if it's either, if they have like a class ring on, if you, you notice a college hat, um, a new car, anything. Sure, there's that. How, how would you solidify that from there? From there, um, you can lead it into real estate somehow. Um, if it's a new car, you can compliment them, ask about interest rates on the new car, convert that to interest rates with homes somehow. It's always an angle. Okay. So that's an avenue you could take or you can ask questions because the more questions you ask, the more they're going to reveal. What is people's favorite subject to talk about? Themselves. <laughs> exactly. So if you see a class ring, oh, it's a great class ring. Where'd you go to college? Where'd you go to school? Oh, I right. went to Stanford. Awesome, great school. What was your major? Mm -hmm. Keeps going. You Correct. wanna go a minimum of three levels deep consistently. Yeah. Correct. If you go more than that, awesome. If you go less than that, you're not going to uncover the motivations, the values, the determination that you need to find out to really sell it. Questions on, in setting the appointment, and talking to people and finding things in common. What do you do with a buyer after you have met with them? They decide, yeah, I can work with you. You send them to the lender to get prequal, and then you find out they need another 15,000. And then that's gonna take a while. We're talking six to eight months. What do you, where do you go? You kind of have a buy-in. You're probably not going to do a one-year broker agreement. What's your next move on that? Just call them every week or what? So I, my broker agreement, my buyer broker agreement states from date signed until transaction closes. Oh, okay. And that's default language that's in the CAR form. Okay. And then how do you keep in touch? What are you providing during that time while they're saving pennies? Yeah, so I do weekly calls. I do uh, twice a week email contact. I do a monthly newsletter. I do a monthly postcard for current clientele. So there's no magic recipe. It's what works for you. The okay. secret is keeping in touch. Right. I, I, I'm one of the instructors for uh, CA Realty Training, mm -hmm. and I tell my students, just pick up the phone. Yeah. Okay. It's as you, simple as that. Do you recommend them looking at property uh, at that time if you know they're not ready? Or, I mean, I don't want to withhold anything from them, but... I generally won't set up an MLS search. Okay. Because if they're looking at stuff right now, 
and I can't go and show them and write an offer that day, yeah. it's going to get their hopes up. They're going to lose faith in me. Yeah. So instead, I'm going to position it as, let's set up a plan to get you where you need to be. Or I explore the alternatives with them. Are their parents willing to gift them money? Is the, is the possibility of a second on the table? Uh, is the price point where we can go lower and still have inventory? Where do we need to be? So explore all avenues. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Great question. I have a question too. Sure. Um, you feel that uh, different people have different um, uh, preferences for uh, as to how to communicate with them? Yeah. Like, and do you check with them to see mm -hmm. what is the best way that you can do it with them? Yes, yes. In my buyer presentation, I have a section where I talk to them about communication and I say, what is your preferred communication? Do you want text message? Do you want phone calls? Do you want emails? What would you like? Say, I want phone calls. Okay, how often would you like phone calls? Would you like them twice a week? Would you like them weekly? What would you like? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, what, what, what would you say? What would I say? Yes. I would say, um, you know, what is the best time and the best day that I can contact you according to what he chose uh, that he wants to be contacted um, as, you know, if it's a text or a, or a phone or an email or whatever. So if you and I are having the conversation and I ask you, what's your preferred method of communication? Oh, text. I like text because I, I reach it, you know, this is the, the, uh, the one that I get fastest. Okay, wonderful. And how often would you like text updates? For me, as soon as you have good news or anything that is a prospect uh, for me to buy it, you know, I would like to know it as soon as possible so I can move on. it. Okay, wonderful. That's totally doable. So I will text you updates as I have them. Now, if I call you, it's probably something that is larger than should be conveyed in a text, and it's a lot of information to convey. So would it be all right to call you and follow up with an email when it's larger news? Sure, just make sure to text me before you call, just in case I'm in a meeting or something, so I can uh, arrange uh, you know, to have some time for that call. So I can awesome. be available. Great. Thanks so much. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's go over some of what your criteria is. Mm -hmm. And just keep it moving. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Preparing the buyer consultation. So is everyone familiar with command? Yes. Yes, no, maybe I heard one yes. I saw a thumbs up. Okay, yes. that's good. So if you're not familiar with command, get familiar with command. It's not going anywhere. We're just going to have to learn to love it. It does have its challenges. We are building it for ourselves. We should aim to try and break it every single day so it can be built better for us. The buyer presentation in command. So you'll go into your designs. You'll click on the arrow, the blue arrow, and you'll create a print post. And I will actually show you. All right, screen share. All right, does everyone see command? Yes. All right. So you'll click this blue arrow down here, or excuse me, blue plus sign, select print, next, then design suites loads. And my luck with technology, it'll probably crash. 
<laughs> so you have buyer presentations right here. There's two available. Mm -hmm. There's a dark and a light version. Use whatever is most consistent with your marketing and your brand. Select use. And now you have all these pages to choose from to add into it. These pages are customizable. You can change the text. You can change what you want with it. So how buying a home works, we'll add this page here. And it loads and it keeps loading. Slowly. Okay. How buying a home works, partner with an agent, get pre-approved for a loan, find your new home, make and negotiate your terms. Let's say that I didn't want this to say get pre-approved for a loan. I can click it, change the text for it to say get the money. I would never do that. I want it to sound as professional as possible. But just in case, I wanted to have a little fun with it. So I have this, understand what you can afford, determine your monthly mortgage payment, understand your debt ratio, prepare for escrow, obtain a pre-approval letter. I can change any of that. I can add in any text, anything that I want. When I'm done, I save it and I print it out. What I do for my clients is I print it on brochure paper. It's not folded, however, it's glossy and it's a little bit thicker. I think it adds uh, a little bit more value to them other than just giving them paper. Now, I didn't always do that. When I was at the beginning, I was very conscious and I still try to be of the money coming into my business and the money going out of my business. It's more expensive, but I found that I get a better return on it. Do what works best for you. Now let's go back to the PowerPoint. Just wanted to mention too, uh, Michael Lewis has a pretty good format on uh, making um, buyer consultations and uh, listing consultations as well. Yeah, find which one works. Like Michael Lewis Marketing Suite, go for it. I know for my market center, we're transitioning away from Michael Lewis Marketing Suite. So people have really been jumping into command. If you need help with command, I'll put my chat, I'll put my information in the chat. I'm one of the tech guys in the Santa Cruz office. I know uh, you have, who's your tech person at Gateway? Renee. Renee, okay. So there's Renee there. We have Jason Flynn in our office and then we have AJ at our Campbell office too. So don't be afraid to ask for help. If one of us can't help you, we're gonna point you in the right direction to get help. So you have your key components of it, table of contents, your dream home, your preferences, your neighborhood, buying 101 at your service, my promise, the glossary. A glossary is a very important thing to have because not everyone, not every buyer knows what an escrow is. And then the question becomes, can you explain to a buyer what escrow is? So if I'm one of your buyers and does anyone want to volunteer or am I going to just pick someone? I'll be your buyer. Okay. What's escrow? No, no, no. I'm the buyer. Oh, oh Christy, no. Oh. What's escrow? Uh-oh. Now I'm in trouble. <laughs> How do I do a backflip? Um, <laughs> okay. What is it? Yeah. I think I need to get out of that. So we have that glossary to explain it. Good. What are contingencies? What is that? Having that glossary is going to help you out. You should know it, you should study it, but then also offer that to them. Say, I have included this in the glossary, any definition and anything that you don't understand, I'm more than happy to explain it. Make it all about them though. You notice this says your dream home, your preferences, your neighborhood. Preferences are big. I ask, I ask my clients, you have 15 boxes. 
Five of them are big boxes. These are your non-negotiables. 10 of them are little boxes that you can do without. Your dream home has to check all five of the big boxes and the majority of the 10 littler boxes. And it works for me. I was showing a client, a husband and wife, a property. The husband said he wanted to write it up right then and there at the property. The wife said no. One thing you do not do with buyers and sellers is you do not get involved in a squabble between husband and wife. Because the woman has a lot more negotiating power than you do. She's the one who has nine times out of 10, not always, there's much more sentiment attached with a home with her. She's the one nurturing her children when they have, they just had their first heartbreak. She's the one who is getting everything ready for her daughter's prom. She's the one getting everything ready for her, her children's first sleepover at the house. She's creating the home. You have to know how to sell to them. If she says no and it's not checking all five of those big boxes, just move on. Talk to her about it and move on. We call it exiting with class. Get out of that situation because you won't win. You can't want it more than they want it. So their dream home, there's some great stock images in the presentations. This talks about what they want in their dream home. Sorry, I had to check the time. We're still on track, we're good. Your needs drive how and when we find your next home. If they say they want a home that's two stories and they want kind of separated living quarters, great, that's probably a big box for them. Don't show them a single level home. If they see it and they wanna see it and they send it to you, have a conversation with them and then agree to show it to them. Visualize your dream scenario for buying a home. Proximity and access to freeways and main roads is huge. Where I am, I am, I don't live in the country, I live in the city, but I'm still a ways away from freeway access, highway access. So it takes me 10 minutes to get to the, and, that, and when I say it out loud, it doesn't seem that long, but it is long, especially when you're on a time crunch. If they say I want really close access within five minutes of the highway or freeway, say, okay, great. Bear in mind, there might be some highway noise wherever we find you a home. If they say it's too loud, it'll become their ocean at some point. These are the questions that have to be answered. What's the one thing that has to happen to make that a reality? How can I make that happen for you? Why is this important to you? And always go back to why it's important to you. That's the motivation, that's the driving force. If we could just, if we could add just one more thing to make this process even better, what would that be? And why is it important to you? Notice how that one's in there twice. If you find out someone's motivations, you can keep that and help with the transaction moving forward. Any questions? Nothing in the chat. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Build your preference profile, so the basics. How many bedrooms do you want? How many bathrooms do you want? Who wants to be the main contact person for everything? What type of phone, what type of communication is best? When do you prefer communication? What times are you normally at work? When is your lunch break? When do you wanna have conversations? How often do you want updates? Your home wish list. So this overlays with the first, uh, with the second, with the slide we were just on. Do you want an open kitchen? Do you want it to be an open concept? Do you want it to be a reverse floor plan? Two story, single story, country property, city, suburban? What do you want? What are, you, what are your top five non-negotiables? The big boxes. <clears throat> 
neighborhood insights. So you can include the neighborhood insights through command. I believe it does it all automated. You type in the neighborhoods and it brings it up. I usually don't put in neighborhood insights because this is based off of Nextdoor, I believe, and not our MLS. I could be wrong though. It's kind of that debate of do clients want perfect information or do they just want information now? If you don't make it an issue, they're not going to make it an issue. So I just don't put it in at all and I can provide them value somewhere else. When they ask for the insights, I can provide a breakdown of it. Is that like crime and all that or just how neighbors get along and there's dog walk park and what? So there's a couple things we don't ever want to talk about with clients. Crime is one of them and the Megan's Law database is one of them. Okay. What here's about what we say. we say, here's a website to check out the crime, crime statistics. Feel free to go on and browse at your leisure. Mm -hmm. Here's the Megan's Law database website. Feel free to go on and browse and make sure that you still feel safe in this home. Mm -hmm. So they want to know when Neighborhood Insights is talking about what's listed, what the average price is listed, how many days on market is generally the average, how many listings there currently are in the neighborhood. Uh, what's the walkability score? Is, am I in the country? Am I in the city? Do I have a neighborhood Safeway I can go to? Things like that. Okay. How are the schools in the neighborhood? Mm. How a home buying works. This is a, think of this as kind of a visual representation of how the process is going to work and you can convey that to them. This is for Keller Mortgage, just a disclosure, affiliated business arrangement disclosure. Always a good idea to have this signed if you're going to re refer them to Keller Mortgage. You don't ever want to make it seem like you push them to Keller Mortgage or to one vendor. You want to give them all of their options and if they choose to go with one, make sure you have the sign because it's a Keller Williams affiliated business. I've had a client question me like, well, why are you referring me to your company's mortgage company? Are you getting some sort of arrangement with them? Mm -hmm. Nope. Your value proposition, this is where you can convey it. If you don't have a value proposition over the weekend, if you are not lead generating and you are not showing houses and you're not doing a virtual open house, come up with your value proposition. You can customize this page as well. You can put in the Y4C2TS, you can put in your value proposition here and a short little bio here. So it's at the end. It's at the end of the packet. It's at the end because this is something that's all about them. When I give them my packet, I say it's a little bit about me and a lot about you. Let's get to the details of it. Conducting the buyer consultation. So this is asking, it's froze on me again. Sorry, folks. Okay, there we go. Back to this. Welcome to the buyer presentation. So you have your clients in a normal pre-COVID world. I would have my clients come into the office. We'd have a conversation. I'd offer them water. We'd go into a conference room, tea, coffee, whatever they'd like. Make them comfortable. And then I ask them, okay, what brings you to this table today? And they kind of look at me and they think, well, don't, shouldn't you know that? I know what brings them to the table today but I want them to say it. The more comfortable they are speaking, the better this is going to go. Because if it's me doing all the talking, that's not good. I want them engaged. I want them asking questions. I want them telling me their life story. I want it all. The more they tell me now, the more I can use to help them in their transaction. 
scripts. We have plenty of scripts for this too. Check KW Connect. Ask your team leaders for the resources too. There are scripts out there. And remember, I was just having a conversation with someone and they said, I don't like scripts because it's manipulating people. And I said, is it manipulating people or is it neurological programming? You're splitting hairs, Jordan. I said, am I splitting hairs? Or am I trying to get someone into the mindset of what it is going to be like during a transaction? I am, I was the child that when my parents said do something and I said, they said, I said, why? They said, because I said so. I said, why? They said, because I'm the adult. I said, why? I said, why? I said, why? I said, why? Now I have two nieces that do it to me consistently. <laughs> so I guess it's kind of uh, that lovely thing called karma. That's I wouldn't have it any other way, though. <laughs> so I don't know if Renee is role-playing this in her 8.30 a.m. class. This would be a great tool to uh, role model and script practice with if you don't have a script partner find one, create one. I'm more than happy to chat with anyone as well. Buyer representation agreement, closing the buyer consultation. So we started this whole thing with the goal to get a buyer representation agreement signed. So Mr. Buyer Seller, Mrs. Buyer Seller, what brings you in to me today? Oh, I'm interested in buying a house. Wonderful. Is this your first time? Yes. Awesome. That's so exciting. Congratulations. And I ask them, are you planning on ever purchasing a private jet? Anyone care to answer that? <laughs> Is that one of your expertise? <laughs> no, I'm not a jet broker, but I do know a few. So if you are planning on buying one, let me know and I can get you in the best care possible. But I'm going to take a guess and say that you're not planning on buying a private jet. So chances are that real estate is going to be your largest financial investment you'll make. Sounds like we need to have a really sturdy foundation for everything, right? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Let's, let's get into it and let's start talking about what you need. They tell me, okay, this is what I want. Here it is. Great. Are you currently working with any other agents? Have you sat down with any other agents? No. Wonderful. Have you talked to any mortgage lenders? Well, I bank with Bank of America. <laughs> no offense to anyone who does bank with Bank of America. I don't like loans from big banks. They are, you have to be a perfect square peg going into a square hole. And if you don't meet that at all, good luck. If I send them to a mortgage broker or a lender, uh, in an independent lender, chances are that lender is going to shop for everything that's going to work for that buyer. I'd much rather have someone trying to find what's best for my buyer clients than ABC bank that has this one product and they have to make this much make this much criteria or it's not going to work at all. In addition, it's a lot harder to track down and have accountability in big banks. No, I haven't talked to a mortgage lender. Wonderful. I have a couple of lenders, I can get you their information. What's important to you when you purchase your home? What's significant about it? Oh, it's going to be a place where my children grow up. It's going to be a place where uh, I bring home my first dog, whatever it is. Take all of that in. Asking questions is going to get you the answers you need. Three levels deep, always, 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 always. So buyer, Mr. Buyer or seller, Mrs. Buyer and seller, 
I'm more than happy to help you on this transaction and this journey and help get your financial foundation set up correctly. I'm more than happy to go out and show you homes all day if we do. Spend hours searching on the MLS for you, calling people for you, getting the right connections in place for you. I have a buyer broker agreement, which authorizes me to act as your fiduciary agent and act in your best interest to do all of that. I cannot do all of what I just summarized for you unless this is signed. And then I go into it and I explain what the brokerage is. And I say, here's the really cool thing about this. In this, there's a commission agreement between me and you. With the current real estate practices, it's usually, commissions are usually paid from the seller's behalf. So you don't have to pay me anything if the seller is already paying. I work for you for free. And they look and they're kind of like, okay, great, awesome. Who does I've never had something that I didn't want for free. If I could get something for free and not have to pay for it, sold. And I believe in the value, I should say. Now, they have, they signed it. Everything went great. We have an app that's branded to us. You have their contact information, send them the link right then and there while they're at the table. Hey, did you get it? And that way you know that they've got it. They're on it, they're looking at stuff. They can mark favorites right from the app. You can see what they're interested in. They're saying they're marking all two-story houses, two-story houses, two-story houses chances are they want to go see a two-story house and there's no one-story houses, that's a conversational piece. Hey, I see you've been liking a lot of the two-story homes in the area. They're great. Are you not wanting to see one-story homes? No, I only want a two-story home. Awesome. That eliminates a whole section of stuff that we don't have to see yet. Great, it's one step closer to them finding their home and then getting into their home. Collections and save home, this is in their contact card in command. Your guides in command. So in your app, we have these things called guides. It's under guide builders in the consumer appellate. You can customize this to say what you want. They can click it and it's kind of like a checklist for them. Pre-consultation, check. Get pre-approval, check. MLS search, check. Negotiations, check. Any questions so far? Yeah, I have one. Um, if we rewind and talk about when you ask the buyer if he talked with any other agents. Um, mm -hmm. if the scenario, if in that scenario he says, uh, yes, I, I uh, did talk actually with uh, so and so, you know, and uh, so so. How do you react to that? They haven't agreed on anything. They didn't do any contract. It wasn't like a serious conversation, but he talked to another agent. So yeah, so Elsie, correct? Yes. So Elsie, have you chatted with any other real estate agents? Um, yeah, I had a conversation with a neighbor of mine who's uh, in the. A real agent, a real agency, kind of. With with he works with a real agent. Okay, wonderful. That's awesome. Did you guys sit down and have a conversation and go over your wants and needs? No, it was very casual. You know, we were walking in the neighborhood and we, you know, happened to bump to each other and we chatted about this and exchanged some thoughts. Okay, great. And what were his thoughts on the current real estate market? Well, you know, he, he was saying that it's really, really very uh, hot market right mm -hmm. now, but uh, the prediction for the future that it's a crash is happening <laughs> somehow. Yeah, there's kind of two schools of thoughts. Either it's going to go up forever or it's going to crash and nothing ever goes forever. So even if it does crash, it's going to circle right around to where we are today. 
So is it better to wait a little bit? You know, if I have the time uh, in my, uh, if it is in my ability to wait, is it better for me to wait until the end of the year and see how yeah. things uh, develop or should I just go for it? That's a great question. Let's circle back to that one because I have some information on lending that's really going to help you. Okay. So you haven't signed anything with your neighbor, correct? Yes, yes. No, it was very casual conversation. And are you wanting to work with your neighbor? I haven't worked with him previously, but he seems to be nice. I'm not really sure. Okay. Well, I have you here today, so I'd like to continue this conversation and we can get through it. And if I can't convey my value to you and it's not a good fit, I'm more than happy to refer you to a great agent who can give you exactly what you need and still help you with your guide to buying, with your search to buying. How's that sound? Yeah, that sounds good. Wonderful. Comfortable with that. So what's important to you in purchasing a home? Um, to be uh, in a good, quiet neighborhood but yet close to uh, the daily needs. Like if I need to get to a market, if I need to get to the highway exit, you know, to be close enough, but still to be quiet and, and serene. So if I found you a home that checked all five big boxes, close to the freeway, still feel that you're in a city, but it's quiet enough for you, you feel safe in it, would you be ready to put in an offer? Um, yeah, I, I, I would. I just need to do some homework regarding the market right now just to make sure that I'm offering at the right time. Although we, are not, we cannot predict what is the right time or a wrong time, but still we can read some uh, data out there and uh, make decision according to that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm more than happy to provide any data that you would like. I'd more, be more than happy to show you homes that match all of your criteria. I'd be more than happy to introduce you to a lender who can talk about all of financial guidelines. However, I can't do any of this until I have authorization to be your exclusive representation and act in your best interest. Okay, then. Let's do it. Wonderful. <laughs> okay. You have to find their motivations, circle okay. back to it, and say, happy to provide all of that for you. I can't do it until I have authorization for you, from you. I see. Yeah. Nice. That was very smooth, actually. It, well, it, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Scripts, practice, practice, practice. If you haven't read the buyer broker agreement, Print it out, read it, go through it. No access to command. I'm still waiting for my test. It was canceled because of COVID and my next okay. test is um, October, in October. Okay. Yeah. When you get it, practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any ahas? I have a question. Sure. So what if you ask them, oh, are you working with any other agent? And they said, oh, I'm actually, I've been looking around with the agent. And then you ask them, oh, have, did you sign any paperwork? What if they say, oh, I actually did? What do we do at that point? You need to let them go. At that point, you say you have to have a conversation with the agent you signed paperwork with. You've signed exclusive representation with him. And I am not in the business to create a bad name for myself or a bad name for realtors. And if you do not wish to continue working with that agent, you need to have a conversation with that agent, get something in writing that the agreement has been canceled and move forward from there. Okay. Because guess what? If they've signed something with an agent, that agent is entitled to a commission. they have exclusive authorization to act as the buyer's brokerage. So it can get messy really quick. It's not ethical to take somebody else's customer. Absolutely. And think of the name you're giving for yourself.
Great question. Any questions or ahas? All right. So daily success habits, your daily 10 for 10 contacts added a day, 10 conversations a day, 10 notes a day, 10 home previews per week. I've recently gotten back into handwriting notes. I use a card service called AM Cards. Um, if you're interested, I'll put my information in the chat box. You can text me, you can email me. That's a great tool. A handwritten note is also great. Stuff it in an envelope, send a, put, put a stamp on it. Nothing beats that. Con 10 conversations a day. We probably all know people who are being affected by these fires. Send them a text, pick up the phone and call them. Hey, how are you doing? Do you need anything? Blankets, bottle of water. What do you need? Just check in with them. Chances are they just need a check in. Handwritten notes, write them to coworkers. Last week I wrote them to the people I was involved with last year. People who comment on uh, the bold Facebook group, they recommend me. Thanks so much for the recommendation in the bold group. I really appreciate it. Can't wait to do lunch with you when we are able to. Scripts, use your lead generation scripts, uncover the motivations, identify the objections, close the deal, speak in terms that the customer understands, and they build confidence. It is not manipulation, it is uncovering their motivations and helping guide the conversation. We're the professionals, and unless they've done this over and over and over and over, they probably don't know what they're really in for. Role play, get your script buddy, get, start practicing, follow the compliance, do not call list, get to lead generating, update your contacts and follow up, contract practice, print out a purchase contract, print out a listing agreement, and go over it, get help and command and connect, make your success list, and then that is the Ignite survey. Any other questions or comments? All right, I will put my information in the chat and I'll leave it in there for a couple of minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, call me, text me, uh, reach out to Laura, she has my phone number, reach out to Rob, she has my phone number, I'm on Facebook, you can find me there. Um, if you see me in person ever, come up, say hi, you can't miss me, I'm a big, tall guy. And yeah. All right. If there's no other questions, we're going to go ahead and hop off. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you all for attending. Please stay safe. Reach out to the people that you know could be affected by this. Lead generate and have a great have a week, great week, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much.